stick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling. Undefeated UFC welterweight prospect, Lewis Cozy. What's going on, Lewis? How's everything going, man? It's going good, brother. Good to see you. Good, good, man. Um, Now, let's go. I guess we're going to start with the Contender Series. You got the headlining spot. You went in there. First round finish. You know, when you look back at that performance, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people congratulating you on it. But at the same time, do you go in there and dissect what happened leading up to it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, me and my coaches both did. I looked at, like, all the positives and the negatives, you know. Um, I would say the negatives are off the bat. I should have timed that sprint a little bit better, you know. I felt like I could have knocked his ass up maybe, like, the first five seconds if I would have placed those punches right. They were a couple inches off, but if I would have uh, been a little bit more patient with it, I, fe I felt like I could have got him. When, I, when After that sprint, I remember uh, – I think he caught me with a punch or something like that. Like, I remember grazing me. Then I remember him uh, – I remember everything, honestly. I remember him checking the kick, and then I seen his body open. Then after that, I, I started thinking. And then after that, I remember hearing my coach left hook and fuck. The punch, the punch that dropped him, I didn't feel, though. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, where does that come from? There's a lot of guys that are criticized for being slow starters, but it seems like that's not the case for you. Does that come from, you know, something that you started or you practiced from a certain, like, an early age or something? Uh, It kind of comes from my dad, honestly. Mm -hmm. He... He used to street fight all the time, kind of being a shithead. Mm -hmm. But uh, practically, the whole point of a fight is to fucking hurt that person before they hurt you, you know? <laughs> so that was my main objective. I wanted to put that guy out and just, like, try to cripple him and send him out in his way before he tried to do anything like that to me. So, I mean, that was my goal the whole entire time. So maybe it's genetics? I don't... Is that yeah, what probably. it is? <laughs> <laughs> just go out there and seek and destroy or some shit. <laughs> how, how do you separate that? You know, separate it being a fight and then at the same time it's it's a competition because you've been competing from such a young age yeah um well fighting and wrestling are a lot different you know no one's trying to punch you in the face and stuff you're also when you're wrestling you're only competing you're doing it for like for the love of the sport and stuff like against other kids you're not getting paid you know like this this is my livelihood now i'm trying to support my family so there's a lot more on risk and um a lot more uh like, more of a reputation on the line, you know? You always want to look good. You always want to fucking feel good out there. But I feel like when you go out there and, like, you and you're aggressive, nobody can really doubt you, you know? You can't... I don't want to, at the end of the fight, be like, fuck, I should have did this, or I should have did that. I should have, like, sprinted right here. I should have tried to hit him my hardest or something. So I, I try to leave it all in there. Um, I, I, I wouldn't really care if I didn't knock him out or if I could have won by, like, decision or just mauled him or submitted him, you know? A win's a win. But... I definitely like to try to knock these guys out just because it's a fight. I don't, I don't feel like these guys move that well or anything like that. All right. Well, you know, when, when a contender series guy gets signed, they usually put him against a, a veteran. But for you, it's not that case. Was it was it difficult for them to match you up? Or I don't know. Yeah, like, what was the process? Four people tell me no. Oh, really? Yeah. That's fucking right back to back to back. I thought, I thought a couple of them were going to say, yeah, uh, I said a while ago, I asked. I remember asking my manager, I was like, is it all right if I post something about this? Like, send my fight? It's like, yeah, 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 we're on, we're on. And then I say something, and like a week goes by, and I'm like, shit, brother, like, can I, can I get a contract, like, to sign or something? Like, can, we, can we get this going? And the fucking guy pulls out, fucking saying he's injured or some shit. Next guy, pretty much, they say no. The next guy after that, I thought he was going to say yeah, but it pretty much was like a fucking maybe for like a week or two. I never had that happen before where it was like a maybe, you know? It was either like a yeah or no. I thought maybe it was too short a notice for him, so I thought we were going to be on like the December 12th card. And then realistically, it was a no. And then um, pretty much last week, they they said I had a fight, and they had offered this one. And it was just like, send me the fucking contract. So <laughs> I'm glad. I, I was training to hop on this card. I just didn't know if I was going to, so everything worked out pretty good. Yeah, it seemed like after the Contender Series that you and your brother would debut on the same event so i was waiting you know what i mean i was waiting like how come he's he's not announcing anything because your brother had his fight announced like months ago yeah 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 i was actually trying to steal that fight from him but <laughs> <laughs> he, he ended up scoring it and then um yeah i don't know it, it took a second man i fucking mm -hmm. i don't really understand there's a lot of politics it seems like in the sport a lot of people are afraid to go out there and just throw hands or whatever, but I'm trying to make a name for myself, so whoever they throw in front of me, I'm definitely going to try to lay out. Yeah, it seems like nowadays, more than any 
that's what you need to do because if you see some of the guys that are fighting right now that just fight and fight and fight and win yeah they get rewarded yeah absolutely you get new contracts you make more money like all that good stuff you know so it's just stuff like that it's also good to stay active and get your name out there the more you fight and kind of like talk and wherever if you show good performances a lot more eyes are on you and the more eyes the better really for this sport because it's an entertainment too yeah well let's talk about your opponent sasha palatnikov ufc 255 a big event thoughts on him in the matchup i like it man um, i'm happy he took the fight he looks like a tough dude he i think he has a couple of inches on me just like victor Reina did um other than that, though, I, uh, it's nothing I've never seen, you know. I fucking trained with a lot of good dudes. Um, yeah. Um, I'm not really worried about anything. Definitely respect the guy for taking the fight. He looks like a stand-up fighter. I'm not worried about the takedowns or anything like that. Um, not worried about the stand-up either. I feel like I'm going to go out there and knock this fucking guy out, but I got more than talking about it, I got to go out there and show it and prove it. What is the process you take when, when the opponent finally signs the dotted line? You know, what do you do? Do you go back and watch the film or do you not even worry about that? And you just focus on what you're doing? Oh, uh, this camp, I mostly, I didn't have an opponent, you know, so I got, I, this camp was mostly just training on getting better, getting stronger, getting bigger, um, faster, better stamina, just in China, trying to make that endurance for my power last longer. And I, I felt like I got the job done for it. I'll be able to show everybody Saturday night. But, uh, yeah, when I got this guy, I definitely did my homework, that's for sure. I mean, I accepted right off the bat. I was fucking trying to get the contract immediately. But I definitely do my homework on people, and I feel like that's a huge part of my success, you know. And I'm sure their team's watching me, too, or whatever. I, I like to watch myself as well and see where I uh, dissect myself, where they think they're going to try to fuck me up or where I where I think I'd be able to catch myself, so... But I definitely do my homework on the people, and then I feel like I, that's where I can catch them and find their openings. With this fight, I noticed that it's at welterweight, and I, f I, I felt that last time we spoke, you were going to go down to lightweight, but what what was the plan? What happened? Uh, I fucking went to the UFC PI, and they pretty much just told me it's, it's going to be a tough cut always. And they're like, you're just going to have to change your body type and what that, and I was, I'm good. I was fucking, like, 0% body fat. I'd be, like, 165 pounds still, so I was like, uh I'd rather just fucking just lift and get bigger, you know. I, I haven't really uh, lifted before, like, consistently or stay true with it. And I was kind of holding myself back a lot, too. Um, I was fasting a lot. I'd fast until, like, three or four and then fucking start eating. It just kind of became a habit. And um, I've been doing that for a while, but I ended up stopping after the USCPR. They pretty much just told me, like, you should just eat more, bro. If I can eat more protein and start lifting. So that's exactly what I did. And I, I noticed... Uh, after just a couple of weeks, man, I fucking noticed like significantly like my weight difference, um, my physical form. I, I, I looked bigger. I looked sharper. Fucking, I looked pretty much just way more cut, you know. And I, I noticed the scale. I was saying I was heavier, so I felt like I was maybe holding myself back with the fast and shit and not lifting weight. So I, I'm still growing too. I mean, I'm only 25, so and this is the first time I really implemented um, lifting in my camp. And I noticed a lot. I noticed the power is way more sustainable. My endurance for it, I can hold it longer. So I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what, how this thing goes. Oh, wow. That's a that's a huge difference, man, you know, going into this fight compared to the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, you know, outside of Lost Boys, you know what I mean? Famous Lost Boys, you know, where have you been working, training at? Uh, I train at pretty much uh, Lost Boys, and then I go to the track for my sprints. And then I go to this fucking place over here to lift my weights and stuff and uh they have like a shit ton of equipment and stuff, so it's awesome. But that's where I go to lift the train, just right across from me, to uh, for my weight train. But all my MMA stuff, grappling, uh, striking, all wrestling, everything like that is at Lost Boys. I, I spoke to your brother, uh, I believe, two weeks ago, and he told me that he goes up there to help you out, and you know, basically, you guys are helping each other out. Uh, yeah. How come you haven't been going over to uh, Team Alpha Male? It's just too far for you to make the drive. Yeah, it's like a five-hour drive for me, and I, I got a kid and a family and shit, so, I mean, I'd love to, but at the same time, I, I get really good work up here. I get, like, one-on-one, -on -one, you know? I mean, down there, it's, it's good work, too. You get to work with a lot of different bodies, a lot of different types of people. Up here, I, I kind of get focused more on, like, jiu-jitsu and my grappling, and then uh, my striking, for sure. Like, this one-on-one -on -one time, just over and over and over, so... I feel good up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it's that's the new, I don't know if it's the new wave of, of training, but, you know, having the camp around you instead of 
being yeah. one part of a a machine of a big team or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like when you're a part of this big team, you don't get that one on one attention. You know, you're kind of just like you're part of the team. You know, you're working with some good bodies, but you never get that one on one treatment. You have to like go out of your way to find that. But for me, it's like I'm the only guy that made it to the UFC around here. I'm kind of like I'm not the only pro, but my my team bases a lot on me because they're all kind of like fucked right now because this COVID stuff. They're they're not getting fights, but they're all still training and helping me. So it's good because it's the camps are based around me, and we just do these break me days where it's like just throw a new body in every two minutes, every round. You know, and these guys can just sit back and fucking start fucking me up and making sure I can, I'm ready. <laughs> Who are your uh, training partners, man? Give us some love. Uh, I got quite a few, man. Um, I got my coaches, Brian Blackburn, Brian Wilson. I got my teammates, uh, Alex, Ross, Andrew, Jacob, Austin. Uh, these new kids, the Rosa brothers. We we have a lot of talent up here. Talent. Uh, this kid named Tyler. Sometimes my brother will come up. So I mean, we have a pretty good, decent sized team. I I feel like you guys are gonna start hearing their names here eventually after this whole COVID shit passes. You know, and they'll they'll finally get their opportunity and chance at this whole fight game. I, I feel like I was just blessed at the right opportunity with my record. You know. Thank well, God for the names, UFC keeping this. Yeah. <laughs> those are names we'll probably see on the contender series in the future. Then. Yeah, absolutely. Do I, your I coaches? In go in there and, and, and spar with you also? They're they're not just on the sidelines? Uh, My grappling coach, will uh, he'll come out and grapple for sure. Mm -hmm. He's a big guy, so I get to uh, feel the strength and the pressure for sure. Mm -hmm. So he's a 6'2", 300-pound guy. He used to play football <laughs> back in the day. He's a black belt. I mean, he's a fucking tank. And then That's my uh, other coach, he's a uh, Muay Thai. He used to train uh, back in the day with Bukau, and uh, mm -hmm. he used to live over there in um, Thailand and shit. He has like 24 years of experience. He doesn't really spar. He does a uh, technical sparring. He, he's just kind of a little bit older now. You could tell he feels it, but he's fucking awesome on the pads. He's has a fucking doctor's degree in kinesiology. He's a professor at HSU. He, the guy's a stud, really fucking. He has so much knowledge in the sport. You, he's a he's an awesome coach. So I, I feel well, well in good hands. You know, I feel good. Seven wins, seven first round finishes. I'm I'm feeling like. That's what your goal is, to have eight wins, eight first-round finishes? Absolutely. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to knock his ass out for sure. I don't know if I'll get it. You know, I never know if I'm ever going to fucking win in the first round. I definitely go out there and try. Fucking, that's all I that's all I can do, you know. I definitely try to do the smartest way possible. I'll definitely look for my openings, and um, I'm going to look to put the pressure on him. I'm going to break him, you know. Either break his jaw or break him first. It doesn't really bother me. If I can take it down, maul him, it doesn't. Whatever he gives me, honestly, but I am going to look to fucking smash this guy. All right. November 21st, UFC 55, or 255, sorry, Las Vegas. Lewis, thank you so much, man, for the time. Always uh, a pleasure talking to you. All the best, man. And, uh, yeah, thank you, brother. It's going to be fun to watch this fight, man. It's going to yeah, be great. I'm excited, man. <laughs> Pick a move in the ring. You can